annals of boxing history, few rivalries have captured the imagination of fight fans like the legendary battles between Joe Frazier and George Foreman. This is the story of their epic clash, a showdown that would define an era and etch their names into the pantheon of boxing greats. In the lead-up to the highly anticipated showdown, George Foreman and Joe Frazier sit down for a pivotal interview, offering insights into their mindset and preparation for the monumental battle ahead. Well, I'm not going to say too much about uh, George because uh, you all know that I'm not really a great rapper, uh, mouth run off of, you know, it is like uh, some people we know. And, uh, I'm very happy that the fight is coming off because one particular reason, I feel like you need uh, people like George and myself in the fighting game every day because fighting is a sport and it's not a, a politician thing and it's not a thing to be rapping off and talking about it. First of all, you're gonna have to get out there and prove yourself and do the job real well. I feel like this is going to be a real good fight and uh, we don't have to sit here and rap about it and go through a bunch of strange uh, commotion because George is not that type of guy and I'm not that type of guy. George is going to be out there trying to win the title and I'm going to be out there trying to hang on to it. I don't want to be as modest as Joe Frazier because 20% isn't as near as enough as you know he's going to get so I've got to get out here and preach and brag and beg and scheme and let you people think that I'm a monkey or something so you can come out and see me do something. And I want all the people in the country, in this country and in all, all parts of the world to come out and see this fight. And I don't think you'll be interested in come out and see two friends shake hands. <laughs> Joe Frazier and me will declare war on that date. And that's, a, that's definitely. And, uh... <laughs> about eight weeks for this fight with George Foreman. When do you say you peak for it? Well, uh, I think I'm about maybe uh, a week or two weeks ahead right now. But anyway, I would say uh, going in maybe the fifth or sixth weeks, I should be at my peak, and therefore we'll just be coasting on in. Ironically, uh, George Foreman has twice as many fights as you've had. He has 37 fights to your 19. Well, uh, that's true, too, and uh, I got all the respect for that. That's why I took myself into camp about eight weeks, and uh, I've been off for a little while, and I'm getting myself together. Otherwise, time will just tell what will happen. Are you training a little longer than for him than you did for uh, Ron Stander and uh, Terry Daniels? Well, I would say, yeah, uh, just a little longer. It's not because of the, the fighter, it's because I've been out a little longer and uh, I feel like George is young and he's strong and he's a big fella and he'll be trying all the tricks in the books to, to take that title. What about that size? Now, he's going to tower over you, much like Ali did. Well, I got all the remedy for that. Uh, I get under him and stay low as much as possible. Otherwise, I got a new thing for him. You're going to see me hitting George with some jabs this time. Well, how are you going to reach him? Of course, you don't mind getting hit yourself. Oh, well, I, oh, I do mind getting hit, but that fog is the game, you know what I mean? If you go out there, you expect to get hit. And I don't worry about being tagged, you know, so I believe I can take it. Joe, you said that you feel sharp. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, I feel uh, to the point where I'm working at ease, you know, I'm running good, I'm boxing good, I'm moving good, and I got the guys uh, doing things that uh, George probably would do, and I'm getting away with it, you know? So I feel like I'll be prepared myself <coughs> for anything that comes about this, in this fight. Stopping briefly in Los Angeles to publicize his January 22nd title fight with Joe Frazier, George Foreman looked strong in a quick workout. And when he stopped to talk about Smoke and Joe, one couldn't help but remember another young heavyweight eight years earlier who had also talked in such bodacious tones. This is my opportunity, and which is it's not his opportunity. That's the biggest advantage. He's had his chance. He's dying with the kings and queens and presidents, and it's my time now. That's the opportunity. I'm going to take advantage of it. I, I ain't had much television like this. I want this. He's tired of it. He take it as everyday things now. It's my time. I mean, does, it, does it upset you? Does it bother you when people belittle your skills and say, well, you've fought nobody? Mm, no, not really. It depends on who say it. Are you saying that? No. All right, then. You're bigger than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it don't matter. I like to think every time I go out there to, to make everybody look like they're nothing. And I hope Joe Frazier go down in the same manner. I don't want nothing to change. I want it to go down in history. George Foreman can't take a punch. Nobody's ever hit him hard. He's never got up the flow bleeding and stumbling and hurting. And can he take a punch? I want all this to continue. After I'm out of the boxing game, retired with a beard, I want that to still be a question that I never fought anybody. Foreman is fresh and good. Frazier, since his bout with Ali, has only fought twice, and both of those opponents were nobodies. Unless he's ready, Joe will have quite a fight on his hands come next year. Bryant Gumbel, NBC News. 
As fight night draws near, the tension mounts to a fever pitch as George Foreman and Joe Frazier come face to face once again, this time at the official weigh-in ceremony. Later on this evening against George Foreman. And the fans are saying Smoking Joe, his famous nickname. Here is Prime Minister Michael Manley wishing Joe Frazier best of luck this evening. And here comes Joe Lewis, one of the greats of all time. Here's Joe Frazier elbowing George Foreman a little to the side. Boxing commissioners looking at the scales now for Joe Frazier. 214 pounds. Joe Frazier, 214 pounds. Hey, hey. And now George Foreman steps up to the scales. With the weigh-in complete, George Foreman and Joe Frazier have laid bare their physical readiness and mental fortitude setting the stage for an epic showdown that will leave an indelible mark on the annals of boxing history. The moment of truth has arrived. The stage is set, the crowd is on their feet, and anticipation crackles in the air as George Foreman and Joe Frazier step into the ring for the fight of a lifetime. Also came into the ring with him and is in the corner just above me wearing a blue sweater with green pants. But this will be Joe Frazier's corner, the one just above me. George Foreman, who's 24 years old, who was an Olympic heavyweight champion, who's fought 37 fights, won them all, 34 by knockout. And very quickly, let's set the scoring rules as we, for tonight as we await the arrival in the ring of Joe Frazier, the defending champion. We're using a 10-point must-scoring system, a mandatory eight count, three knockdowns in the round will not end the fight. That normal rule has been waived for this heavyweight championship fight. No saving by the bell. If a fighter is down, when the bell sounds, counting will continue. It's a 21-foot ring with a canvas like a mattress. Very soft. The Joe Frazier kind of canvas. Canvas. He doesn't bounce. He's a slugger. Keeps coming at you like a tank. Foreman bounces some, and when he does, he'll think it won't be too good for him. In the background, I hear cheers, so Joe Frazier, the heavyweight champion of the world, age 29, has had 29 bouts. Unbeaten, 25 knockouts in his career. Only four men have gone the distance with Joe. Muhammad Ali, of course, in the never-to-be-forgotten bout of March 8th, 1971. Oscar Bonavina twice. There's Joe Frazier coming down the aisle, hanging on to his manager, Yancey Durham, as he always does. That's the Joe Frazier habit. Joe hasn't been very happy with George Foreman's behavior. Joe says he's a guy who likes to be let alone, who respects other fighters. But Foreman has been expressing disrespect for Frazier, and Frazier has seemed openly edgy. Not an act, not the usual promotion. He wants to do away with Foreman quickly, if he can. Bonavina twice, I was saying. Ali once, and Scrap Iron Johnson once. They're the only ones who the distance with Joe Frazier. As Joe gets into the ring, right, he'll be operating right above us. There's George Foreman. Oh, they've changed the corners on it, gentlemen and ladies. George Foreman will be in this corner. Originally, it's been set for George Foreman to be in the corner diagonally opposite us, but no, George will be right above us. You see Joe in that colorful attire. The white, the white gown, in effect, with the gold, really, gleaming gold trim and belt. Joe Frazier came in at a surprising 214 pounds. Eight and a half pounds more than he was the night he fought Muhammad Ali. George Foreman had for him a most satisfactory 217 and a half. George, of course, being three inches plus taller than Joe, and George having some considerable reach advantage on Joe. The referee will be Arthur McCanty as the ring announcer Dwight Wiley begins to get ready to introduce the contestant. 
Arthur McCanny, who's refereed 21 championship fights in his career, including the Ali Frazier fight. Generally considered the best referee in boxing in the United States. The judges, Phil Spano, veteran boxing judge from Philadelphia, and Jacques Minot of Jamaica. And all three will be scoring the fight. Again, the 10-point must scoring system per round. Well, they're trying to psych each other out as Arthur McCanny makes his announcement. This contest for the heavyweight championship of the world will be governed by the rules of the Jamaican boxing board. There's no fear in either man. There is no fear in George Foreman. He's grown enormously in his confidence of speech and presence as well as in boxing. We're close to the start of round one. Any second now, and we may have an interesting evening. Frazier, quite understandably, the favorite. Foreman comes out, punching with the right. Frazier in his usual style. Smoking is the way he puts it. His job to get inside. His best weapon, the left hook. Foreman is vulnerable to the hook. Oh, the crowd was misled when Joe fell back a little. There was a slip off balance. Historically, Frazier has not been a good first-round fighter. But historically, he has been a tremendous, tremendous fighter. A great champion. You saw the left hook land on Foreman. That's what he'll be working on all night. Foreman would like to keep punching and keep Frazier away from him with his punches. Joe's job to get inside. Steadily use that left hook. Whip. Oh, Foreman connected as you saw. He's a big, strong boy. He likens this fight to the same kind of problem he faced. There's another left by George. He's getting into Frazier's head. We'll find out tonight how much the Ali fight took out of Frazier, if anything. And we'll find out tonight just how good George Foreman is in punching and in taking a punch. I think he hurt Joe Frazier. I think Joe is hurt. Angie Dundee, Ali's trainer right next to me, is saying it. You may hear him. Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! The heavyweight champion is taking the mandatory eight count, and Foreman is as poised as can be in a neutral corner. He is as poised as can be. We have a minute left in this first round, and already this fight is proving out what some have expected. Oh, that left is getting in there. Underneath, underneath Archie Moore is yelling to Foreman. We've got the excitement here that we look for. Frazier is dazed. He is getting hit again and again and again. The same head that was hit so often by Muhammad Ali. Frazier is dazed. You see the countdown for the first round. Foreman has not panicked. Foreman is going about his job. Foreman is all over Joe Frazier. Frazier is down again, and he may be. No, he is rising. He is game. He doesn't know where he is. The mandatory eight count. He doesn't know where he is. Now the round is about to end. Two knockdowns in the first round of Joe Frazier. Down again. No saving by the bell. He's up, and so the fight continues. Three knockdowns in the first round by George Foreman. The stool hasn't even been brought out yet for Frazier. What excitement! You're looking at Joe Frazier, Yancey Durham over. The crowd shocked, but the crowd here rooting for Foreman. Muhammad Ali was there, hero. Now you're looking in slow motion. The right for the first knockdown. Clean as a whistle. 
Oh, what a first round. Well, back in Frazier's corner. As you look at them working over Joe, the ice pack at the back of the neck to restore the senses. Let's go to the slow-mo for the second knockdown. The right again. Clean as a whistle again. We're waiting for the start now of round two. There was no question about the first round. Three knockdowns. Now Joe is coming out. Adam wants to come back in a hurry. You'll not find a game of man than Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier who went down three times in the first round. A caution from Arthur Mercani. Oh, he is all over Frazier again. He has Frazier in the corner. His, Frazier's knees buckled. He is about, he is down. He is down for the fourth time in the fight. George Foreman is doing to Joe Frazier what he did as a 19-year-old to a veteran Russian, a fellow named Iona Shapoulos in October of 1968 in the Mexico City Arena. A quick left from George. Another. Frazier is down for the fifth time in this fight. Fifth time. Three times in the first round, twice in the second. McCanny checked his, checked his senses, checked Frazier's senses. Right. It's target practice for George Foreman. It is target practice. Frazier is ready to go again. Joe is standing. There he goes. Three times. Three times. The fight is stopped. No, it is not. It is not stopped. Angie Dundee is screaming, stop it. Bertie Pacheco, Ali's doctor next week. It is over. It is over. It is over in the second round. George Foreman is the heavyweight champion of the world. And I'm going up into that ring to talk to Joe Frazier, the loser, and to George Foreman, the winner, because Joe Frazier has been a great champion and deserves consideration. Yancey Durham hugging him. They're going crazy about George Foreman. I'll be back with Joe Frazier in a moment. We're in the ring corner, as you can see, Joe Frazier's corner. George Foreman, the new heavyweight champion of the world, has just spoken to Joe. Yancey Durham, a very great manager and boxing man, is over his fighter. And Joe Frazier has been, as I've said, a great fighter. I'm certain the camera is having trouble spotting me. The knockout of the fight was stopped at 135 of the second round. Joe, I'm so terribly, terribly sorry. In the end, George Foreman emerged victorious, but both men showed incredible skill, determination, and heart. Their rivalry will forever be remembered as one of the greatest in boxing history, a testament to the power of the human spirit.